All right. <clears throat> if you watched my last video about pruning my re-veg plants, you'll know that I am a little behind in my garden. And that is because I have a huge garden this year. I just finished up harvesting my sweet corn. And if you follow me on Instagram, I have a highlight reel all about the process of corn. Corn Holio, the great Corn Holio. Um, anyway, you can go check that out, Queen of the Sun Ground Instagram. But today I want to talk to you about nitrogen deficiency. So as I was pruning my plants, I noticed that there was way too many yellow leaves. And this is indicative of a deficiency. Now I am hypothesizing using my knowledge that this is a nitrogen deficiency. My plants did pretty well in this, I had them actually uh, last year, this row in the ground was where my plants were and they did really well. I didn't see nitrogen deficiency, but I normally do BioLive and neem meal mixed in as well as fish hydrolysate or organics alive vegetative um, at least once a week throughout the cycle. And then I did use uh, Soilscape Solutions Foliar Spray more heavily in the flowering phase so it maintains the proper amount of nutrients now this new spot new garden is over here on this side and I, like i said i didn't uh test the soil and unfortunately <clears throat> i didn't add neem now i really like neem meal for multiple reasons one being it is a slow release long lasting nitrogen source and the other being it has IPM, Integrated Pest Management Properties. Um, if you don't know what IPM is or want a deep dive, I've got classes on IPM. Um, I've got like a $5 crash course as well as a $55 three hour long course with an ebook. I've got articles on seedsman.com. I've got articles at the Humble Seed Company and my website, Queen of the Sun Growing. So tons of resources. I love IPM. <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons I love Neem so much. Um, you know, as a fertilizer and, um, wow, I'm just watching these imported cabbage moths, speaking of IPM, flying all around my garden right now and I have not sprayed BT. So I need to get out there and spray BT while it's still warm. <clears throat> this is the time. First new moon of September. I don't know what the moon phase is right now, but this is the time to spray BT for those imported cabbage moths. So go out there and spray the BT. Bacillus thuringiensis curtaski, not Israelis. As I was pruning my re plants, I noticed that there was way too much yellowing. So I know I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say, okay, so what's different about this garden from last year? Um, a new garden space, less nitrogen in the soil, although I did top dress. See, this is what I was thinking. I didn't put the neem meal amended into the soil, but I did put the BioLive in and I kept continuing to top dress at least once a month, thinking that it would just be present. Well, it's been a pretty cool summer so far. The nights have maintained um, lows of the 60s, but in the last two, three weeks, it's dropped into the 40s. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me set this slurry down. <clears throat> So you can see what I mean by nitrogen deficiency. Okay, yellowing leaves, older, lower leaves. Look at this one's really bad. Okay, the reason that I'm concluding that it's nitrogen is because of the differences in fertilizer, what I'm lacking this year compared to last year, um, how the chlorosis or the yellowing of the leaves appears. So when your plant um, shows yellowing leaves that start in the older leaves and move their way up to the younger leaves, typically from bottom to top, it is a mobile nutrient. When the entire leaf turns yellow and there isn't intervenal or venal chlorosis, meaning it's not between the vein or the vein that's turning yellow first, it's the entire leaf, that is indicative of a nitrogen deficiency. So I wanted to rule out though and make sure like, okay, um, 
Is it a lockout or a true deficiency? Because most deficiencies I see from people are caused from a lockout. And that means that there is nitrogen present in the soil, but perhaps the plant isn't able to access it either due to pH fluctuations or um, a, an accumulation of another nutrient. Oh God. Um, so for this instance, I did a slurry test. So I took distilled water um, and I took a scoop. I took a, a scoop of soil from around the root zone. I shook it up and I um, put my pH pen in there and I tested it and it came back at a 6.9. So it's not the pH rule. This is process of elimination. That's what you wanna do when you have any kind of deficiency or toxicities, process of elimination. So it's not a pH issue. And then I think about it like, well, how does the plant take up nitrogen? Well, it takes up nitrogen. It has to go through nitrogen assimilation. And so when you use um, a dry amendments, which is what my plants have been relying on, because if you've tried to order Organics Alive Vegetative, it is out on my website. It's out on their website. I apologize for the delay. I'm being out of it, but they have had issues. So the reasons why I like Organics Alive Vegetative is because it is immediately available. It doesn't need to go through the nitrogen assimilation process. It doesn't need to be solubilized or broken down by bacteria. All right, well, the dry amendment by alive down to earth and neem meal needs to be broken down by bacteria. Bacterial um, activity really slows down the colder it is, the cooler the soil is. So lately it has been pretty cool. I'm seeing cooler temperatures overnight um, for a while and that can slow down the breakdown of nitrogen in your living soil. So we really want to make sure our plants have access to nitrogen right away. Now I'm going to show you another process of elimination. We're going to get a little nitrogen test kit out here. So this is just a little rapid test and take that same water that we did the soil um, slurry the pH test and we are going to do a nitrogen test. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is put water in this and shake it up. There's two, I don't need that. So let's get it in here. I wish I had a strainer. Let's see if I can pour this in without getting much debris. Okay. There's a little bit of debris in there, but it is what it is. So I poured the water in. Now I'm going to break this, that pill, break the powder. And shake it up. We're going to see what our soil nitrogen levels are and see if my soil is truly um, depleted in nitrogen or if, like I'm hypothesizing, it's just slowing down the available nitrogen because of the cold temperatures. So what I did yesterday is I brewed a compost tea, which I've got water filled up again for another compost tea. So we're gonna do um, worm castings and this is gonna increase and boost that uh, bacterial activity, right? So we're gonna brew, bubble up some compost tea and I'm going to add some blood meal to it. Blood meal is high in nitrogen. I think it's a 15-0-0. You don't wanna go too heavy in nitrogen in the flower cycle because we don't wanna push out and make our buds leafy. We just want to stop this chlorosis. We're not trying to get that dark green. We're just wanting to slow down chlorosis of the lower leaves because I am, it's so bad on some of these plants that I'm losing small um, branches. And this is what I'm showing you. When you have a problem with your plant, how I go through this process of elimination and thinking about where I'm at. So we don't want to um, let this go for longer than five minutes, but we want to give it a couple of minutes to really get to the right color. This is, let's see where we're at. Oh, 
So it's hard to say. Um, I'm not even really seeing purple yet. So we'll give it a few minutes. And in the meantime, let's go start a compost tea and I will show you what I am going to do. And my garden space is a fucking mess. So apologies for that. So we got our aeration turned on, which these are not, got air stones in there. Not bubbling up very much, but um, it's putting oxygen in there. So that's really what we need. Let's see if I can make this taller. All right, so my Patreon member, Hans Cold, was kind enough to send me some of his aged worm castings. So we're gonna go ahead Thank you, Hands Cold. And if you want to sign up for the Patreon, it's Patreon forward slash Queen of the Sungrown. We have a homestead gift exchange that happens here um, every fall, winter time. Keep things interesting. And he sent me um, worm castings. He also sent me some egg amino acids. So yesterday I gave them, I, I made two teas. The first one, I used the rest of my fish amino acid. Um, and the second tea, I did the egg amino acid because I just have too many plants for one 55 gallon drum. I need to do two at a time. And then here's the blood meal. So this has 1% water soluble nitrogen and then the rest is insoluble. So it has to be broken down by bacteria. So I'm going to add a little bit to this tea bag and that's gonna give me a little bit soluble nitrogen, a little insoluble, and I'm actually going to brew this for 24 hours and then I will, um, okay, here we go. Now there's an apple from my Apple FAA. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, FPJ, sorry, Apple FPJ. Like I said, I'm a little ill. Um, okay, so we got this compost in here. Um, and what the all right, so look at that nasty water. It's got all kinds of junk in there. I need to clean it out, but um, Compost is in there air. Oh, no. Oh my god Well It is really in there god damn it I'm not digging through that. It's just gonna get watered out tomorrow. It is what it is I'm so glad that I got that on camera. Um, okay, so you can see this is a good example of the plant that is just yellowing out. And if I had been up here three weeks ago, I could have stopped this from moving up so far. But that's life, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I'm looking at my nitrogen test. And it looks to me like it is adequate, uh, if not sufficient. Let's see, what does that look like to you guys? So really it's about making sure that the nitrogen is accessible to your plant. Um, and how we're doing that, right? We're using this compost tea to boost microbial activity to break down nitrogen faster. Um, I'm ordering fish powder, which is like a fish hydrolysate. So any amino acid like the FAA, the egg amino acid, the fish amino acid is already completely available to your plant. So um, we don't want to add too much nitrogen and too much, uh, you know, available, but uh, we want to stop this chlorosis from where it's where it's at and from going any further. So let's tune in next week and see how it goes. And I'll show you one of my foliar feeds. Um, and yes, you can foliar your feed in flower. Uh, and I'll probably do one tomorrow morning if I am feeling better. All right, go check out the FAA video, go check out the pruning video and uh, subscribe, like, share, and tune in to my patreon.com forward slash queen of the sun grown if you want to support this more, my garden, my life, my family. Thank you guys.
So I just want to add that gardening, there's always, um, every year there's an opportunity to learn something new. And um, this year from last year, from growing in California to growing in Washington, um, it's one of the things I love about growing outdoors is that there's just, there's life, it's living and it's always gonna be different. Um, and that's why paying attention and making observations is so important to your garden.